Thank you very much, Abit. That is a very uh, convincing and important message that you bring, and we talk about this uh, often. Uh, we'll be open to questions. I would just like to uh, mention one thing, that we talked about the future agreement, or the agreement with, about the Red Dead Sea plan, but we didn't talk about all the water that's coming from desalination plants now. Yes and uh, what's possible using this water that we presently have and also wastewater treatment. So I'd like to put this element into the discussion because we have a lot of desalination. It's on the coast, on the coast of Israel, and Gaza is planning a plant. But uh, I think that's another element that we should uh, actually address. Actually, the whole concept of the Red Dead Canal is to use the different uh, elevation because they will bump water from the Red Sea to 125 meter. Then they will drop it to the minus 400 and the differences of elevation will create energy and the energy will be used for desalination. And the whole idea is to create energy and des desalinated water. And this is the first phase for them. But we have five desalination plants on the coast and what can we do about that right now? <laughs> That's another question. So. Yes, you, you have recalled the, the different projects that were discussed uh, previously, uh, including during our Geneva meeting uh, some years ago, uh, that were uh, also including uh, this uh, uh, possibility to, to uh, produce electricity through, uh, through a project. And also another important objective of this project were maybe too ambitious, that's the reason why they have not flied, uh, was to correct the drying up of the, of the, of the Dead Sea. What, uh, according to your evaluation, would be the contribution to the project uh, agreed last December to this uh, problem of uh, the Dead Sea uh, drying up? Uh, in order to solve problems of the Dead Sea, we, we have to compensate it with a, a huge amount of water. It's almost uh, seven or eight times more than what we are doing in this stage one of this project. So, but it, it's a, it's, it, will, it will tell us a lot if it will be feasible to blend seawater with uh, the water of the Dead Sea without uh, uh, creating any environmental uh, problem that we will uh, be, uh, it, that, that will affect uh, all the life around the, this uh, Dead Sea. So um, I think it's important from this point of view. Of course, it will not, uh, it will not solve the problem. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate the, the members of the panel for the personal roles that they played in making this uh, agreement possible. I mean, uh, we've been hearing about this for eight, 10 years, and it's finally, there is an agreement. This is absolutely fantastic. So congratulations on that. Um, so, so I, one of my questions has just been answered. This is to what extent this will stop the falling of the level in the Dead Sea. But then I have another question, which is uh, Gaza. Uh, well, there doesn't seem to be anything in this agreement for Gaza. What could be done about the water shortage in Gaza? Yeah, about, about Gaza. Gaza is the pilot project for the whole problems, actually, is, is, is a representative for the whole problem, which is population growth, uh, uh, poor infrastructure, uh, unstable area. And uh, nowadays, uh, there is a project uh, fa uh, initiated by uh, Union for Mediterranean in Barcelona to have large scale desalination plant in Gaza cost around one, uh, $500 million. Uh, UNICEF and European Union, they started the pilot project and nowadays they uh, producing, uh, they planning to produce uh, uh, 100 million cubic meter in, in Khan Yunis to solve the immediate needs for, for water. But the other project is uh, waiting, the feasibility study is there, the whole documents is there, but, but uh, waiting the, the, to secure the fund. Well, and uh, as, as we know, all of us, the only solution for Gaza is desalination. 
I was just to mention, when I was talking about uh, practical solutions, uh, and I mentioned uh, before, is of course the solution from Gaza is the salination plants. And, uh, for, but for now, we can, there is all the infrastructure that uh, Gaza will get more water from Israel. And somehow it, does, it, it is not working. It is not working, but we need, I, I think, one or two days in order to connect the infrastructure and to supply according to the agreements that we have with the, with the Palestinians. And somehow it's not working. I think that, of course, we have to look for uh, 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 much uh, wider solutions uh, for the uh, for uh, uh, for the future, but for now there are practical solutions that we can cooperate with, and uh, I hope uh, sometimes <laughs> it will happen. From the desalination plants that I, I mentioned, one of them, Ashkelon, is just 15 minutes away, and uh, how many meters? Uh, just to connect. No, today we have the infrastructure to connect. There are infrastructure inside Gaza that uh, can convey the water from the fence into the reservoir of Gaza. There is an infrastructure that when I was the water commissioner, we invested a lot of money to bring water up to the fence in order to supply the additional uh, 5 million cubic meters for Gaza. But we, we have to connect 100 meters of uh, pipelines, and somehow uh, it, we didn't manage to do it. Uh, as you know, there is a, an Oslo agreement in Article 40 and the annexes. The Israelis will provide Palestinian in Gaza 5 million cubic meter at commercial basis. And uh, the Norwegian, as Tal said, the Norwegian, they did the main pipeline inside Gaza. And uh, uh, Askelan uh, West, uh, desalination plant is there. But the, the problem is political problem. And the politicians, they have to decide to connect these things. And they don't decide because the Israelis, they have their point of view, the Palestinians, they have point of view. But the, the major problem now in Gaza, there is a lack of water problem, quality of, of water in Gaza. Uh, the people, they are drinking water, to tell you the truth, in some areas, uh, the water quality is unfit for agriculture. Uh, well, I have a question. Uh, first of all, thank you so much to Dr. Tal and Dr. Dr. Tamimi, Tamimi for this brilliant presentation and well, congratulate the region for this agreement. Um, and my question goes on this sense, so the water problem, and, and I, I, I was stating that before, that uh, water production brings with itself uh, the, the opportunity of economical development. And this was brilliantly presented uh, right now in, in here with, with, the, with the questions raised by, by Dr. Tamimi. And my question is, um, if Israel seemingly uh, is able to put this water to a better use in terms of the revenues uh, to its own economy, uh, which cannot be done, neither by the Palestinian Authority or by, 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 by Jordan, uh, shouldn't uh, there have been uh, an agreement or is there a possibility to have an agreement on technology transfer between these countries? And uh, if uh, politically this is not possible, uh, can the scientific community of this region cooperate together to overcome these political difficulties or, and obstacles? Yeah, the, the problem in the in the water sec in water is not the lack of uh, of uh, let me say solutions. The problem is you cannot desalinate the water problem from the other political problems. You cannot extract it. This is the interlinked between water problem and others is is complicating the solution. But the, the professional groups in the whole Middle East, in Palestine, in Jordan, and in Israel, they have the, the solution. The solution is there, but you need to in, enable the political environment to, to solve the problem. You, ca you, cannot, you cannot ignore that. You cannot ignore that, even if you want to ignore. There is a political problem need to be solved, 
uh, until then the water problem. But, but the major issue is water time dimension is very important because you have increasing demand and shrinking resources. Uh, do you know where, uh, sorry, I have another question. Do you know where we are on the studies financed by the World Bank regarding the original uh, project, Dead Sea, Red Sea? Uh, I, I know the, the two things. The, the study of socioeconomic impact is already finished, but uh, the World Bank uh, uh, published the summary, the executive summary, not the whole study. I don't know why. The, the environmental study, uh, the first results is published, is about the quality of water, what will happen. And there is a lot of conclusions there and a lot of discussion about the conclusions. But still the environmental uh, impact assessment, uh, continue, it's continuous uh, study, is not finalized yet. This is what up to my knowledge maybe. Let me uh, give you about Gaza uh, some things which are not very well known to all. It turns out that water in Gaza is not in the hands of the central government but in the hands of municipalities. And it turns out that there's already on a commercial basis, I don't remember if it's five or eight million uh, cubic meters a year, which are sold by the national company Mekorot to these communities. And it is true that there was this project of connecting a pipeline from Ashkelon and for, for, for some good reason which no one understands, it was not done because it's a commercial thing. Now, it turns out that, as you well know, people in Gaza are just digging wells. And the quality of the water is so bad. And the water resource is going to disappear because the, the sea is going to pollute it. So we have a, a real problem that there are thousands of wells, you know, people just drive a well. So but it's a very complicated problem. And also there are people who make a lot of money selling money with jerry cans for $20 a jerry can. Whereas a ton of water, a cubic meter, cost what, uh, $1 or something like that on a commercial basis. So this is to tell you how the problem is complicated. The real solution would be to build a desalination plant. We don't know if the money will come. We don't know, unfortunately, if Israel will, will allow the material to come in. So it's a very complicated problem. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. also a sanitation problem. Because yes. when there's no electricity, everything gets polluted. And if there's an epidemic, it will cross the border. As, as I said in my presentation, there is a, a, a local problems and uh, regional problems. The local problems, actually, the Palestinians, they, don't, uh, they have own problems. And this is inherited. For example, as, as uh, Professor Robert said, in Gaza, we have Egyptian laws. Still, we have Egyptian laws. The Palestinian Authority trying to, to change it for governing the water sector and the municipalities are the, main, the major player. In Palestine, we have uh, uh, Turkish ma mandate laws in Jericho. We have uh, British laws in, in, in some areas. We have Jordanian regulations and we have Israeli military orders. That's why the governors of water sector is, sorry to say, is uh, the Palestinians is like uh, the only lady in the party, danced with everybody. Danced, danced with the British, with Jordanian, with, and this is needs long time to reorganize it and need stability and need a strong government. Weak government cannot do that. Weak because cannot do that because if you ask the people who are in Jericho to give up the agricultural water for drinking is like asking a monkey has banana in his mouth will not accept because they are the social figures. One of the major problem in Jordan now to change the legislation, the legislators of uh, the parliamentary powers are the, the farmers, big farmers are in the parliament. Then you, they cannot change. This kind of social dynamics inside societies is, is a big problem. Also in Israel, as, uh, as uh, Tal said, 2% of the national economy using 60% of, of water 
as, as, uh, as water resource engineer, this is a huge mismanagement. Maybe it doesn't take. It's not. It's not a huge uh, mismanagement. It's a policy of the government. Yes. The government is doing it because all, all not because of the economical aspects of agriculture, because all the other environmental, social, cultural, everything uh, that uh, is very important to Israel. And you know that we invest a lot for water for agriculture, also by building desalination plants that this water is going to, to, this, uh, to agriculture uh, uh, irrigation. So um, this is a policy of a government. And uh, I think you, you cannot compare uh, what is the meaning of one cubic meter for one party or another party or for one sector or another sector. Every, every country should decide how much water and how it, they should uh, deal with the water as long as they, as they know the, the meanings. But I want to mention something else that's very important that you mentioned, Robert, is water supply is not only a desalination plant. It's not only a, a source of water. It is a conveyance system, it's a sanitation, it's reservoirs, it's organization, it's law, according to what Tamimi said, it's uh, regulation, it's... Uh, uh, um, uh, costs of water and everything. So in order to solve the problem, of course, we can alleviate the shortage of water by building the salination plant, but all these issues that are connected to water supply must be dealt in parallel and not uh, only... And this is, I understand what Tamimi said, the difficulties of the Palestinian Authority to deal with. So uh, as I see it, it's a political problem, not really a water problem, because we're increasingly providing water and solving the technology, I mean, the technology is growing, and uh, also the amount of water, the plants, the knowledge about the, uh, the, even the aquifers and the, uh, the, the wells that are being uh, drilled in, uh, in Gaza, and so on and so forth. So it's really a political problem. I think we could all make it happen, and uh, there's a, uh, there would be enough water if there were political solutions. So uh, are there any other comments or questions? Otherwise, with that, we close the session, and uh, we have things to think about.